So it's your last chance to grab your cup of coffee, a seat and relax. Uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Hello everyone, uh, let's get started. So before we're going to start, just a few details about how we're going to, to run the, the webinar. Uh, we're going to go to the next slide. Next slide. Uh, let me see. Of course, yes, this is it. So, uh, yes, the, um, sorry for that. The webinar is going to be muted by default, which means uh, you will not be able to, to talk. So we'll do the, the talking. But of course, you can use the Q&A window to post questions, which is on the right of your screen. Uh, questions, of course, will be answered at the end of the session. And yes, a recording will be provided. Also, at the end of the session, you will receive an automatic uh, email. Okay, so now, well, let's get started for this first MAPIC webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about the mix between leisure and retail real estate. And to discuss this topic, uh, I'll hand it over to Rita Kokyo, who is uh, our uh, leisure uh, MAPIC, leisure expert at MAPIC. Hi, Matthew. Uh, thank Hi. you. Thank you very much for your warm uh, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a few minutes ago, we've seen that we have subscribers a little bit from different parts of the world. Uh, and it's fantastic to see uh, that we have people from different markets uh, joining this webinar. Uh, I'm here uh, together with Gilles, Gilles de Vandeville. Good Hi, afternoon. Gilles. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Very happy to be here. Uh, so very briefly, uh, Gilles. Uh, has been a mall consultant and has over uh, 25 years of experience in pre-opening consultation, uh, leisure, uh, retail payment strategy, as well as hospitality. Some of his work include uh, such projects as um, Aswag in Abu Dhabi, the Two Rivers in Nairobi, and a number of projects in Morocco and France including uh, well-known integration of entertainment concepts within the location of uh, Univaira Damco and uh, management of malls with Imashan. So uh, the purpose of this discussion is to uh, understand uh, and the both sides of the perspective of the entertainment industry, the property and the leisure concepts. So, uh, Gilles, please tell us more about uh, leisure. Why is it important new milestone for property guys? Thank you, Rita, for that brilliant introduction. We all read recently in newspaper the announced dead of the malls facing e-commerce. Developers and retailers have started to adapt with digitalization, for instance, 
And the next big thing is clearly leisure and entertainment. Let us just quote Forbes in his recent study claiming that 72% of millenniums choose experiences over material items as a way of pur purchasing happiness. What does it mean? They want to purchase, purchase happiness. It means that they want to live a unique experience and it must be just positive and wholesome. Question is how, with whom and where? Uh, Gilles, I think I, we might have a little technical problem because I cannot move on the next slide. Here uh, we are. So yeah, so you were saying that 72% of millennials choose experience over uh, material items. So basically we want to pay for having fun rather than owning things. Yes, um, I think we can talk about leisure mania. Leisure mania is reaching all kinds of assets, welcoming people to make sense to their experience. Let us talk about shopping malls with retail retailtainment. Retailers themselves with new leisure stores like Lego or Star Wars. High strips with hype concepts like Armani Coffee. Transit hubs like airport or station with VR room or relax room. Hospitality is also. All the boutique hotels have a leisure mix and service. But also stadium, museum. It makes part of the story of entertainment and they organize concerts, they have stores and digital dreams. So leisure is a new milestone in any type of property asset and destination. So um, would you tell us a little bit more, Gilles, about uh, this transition from hyper-entertainment models to retailtainment? Yes. Let's make a little bit of history, starting with where malls are born, it means in America, with the more iconic group, which is American Dream. We all started discovering uh, leisure and entertainment with West Edmonton Mall and then Mall of America. And just, you can see on the screen, this is the last one, which is um, American Dream. Just to have an idea of opportunity, but also of the issue. Just fix how many space it takes, 5.3 million square meters, 30 million of visitors uh, expected every year, 25 rides and attractions, including roller coaster, lake indoor, wave pool. It's a mixed resort in integrating encores and leisure is a milestone. But for the rest of the discussion, just take a small notice that it requires a lot, a lot of meter. Another interesting project is Kidia. Why? Because it is in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Without any question of interest, Let's just remember that only one year ago, women could not drive in, uh, in, um, in Saudi Arabia. Cinema just came this year. And because the kingdom decided it will happen. There is a national program of a $42 billion to support leisure as ambassador to promote the destination. And this is a key point. Leisure has become a new ambassador for our country. Just take a look to Kidia. An entertainment city, which is a flagship, 70 million visitors, 1.129 acre site, an incredible mix of resort with all inclusive concepts like sports cars and aquatic adventure. It would have never happened only one, one year ago, and it will happen. Last slide is important because we're talking about Asia. America and Asia, they both say they were at the origin of the biggest mall. I don't want to take advantage of one of each other, but let's just remind that there are more than 100 attraction parks in China. The three largest malls in the world are in China. And look at this one in Hong Kong. It is so wonderful leisure mixed resort that the retail is not even the anchor. We are talking about a museum, a museum with art, culture, and dining. It's a perfect mix. Just to change off the continent, we can also quote uh, Detroit in Dubai, where fashion is the encore, or Bikini Berlin, where there is fashion, DG, dining experience. All this demonstrates the interest and in the creation of uh, regenerated programs. Wow, that's very impressive. Thank you for making us dream. I've also recently studied in uh, the Kearney Global Retail Development Index that uh, the new uh, future shopping uh, destination projects will only have about 50% of leasing space uh, dedicated to purely shopping, and the remaining space will be allocated to entertainment, food, uh, wellness, and uh, personal services. 
Well, uh, let's go to the next chapter, which is uh, the, what are the main challenges? And of course, obviously, the opportunities uh, in this market. So Rita, it's up to you. I think you want to talk about the retail property players. Uh, yes, sure. I think that it would make sense. Uh, so quickly, uh, just to tell you uh, my background, I work um, on the leisure track for Matic, the retail property show. So our core business is uh, the retail property uh, developers, uh, investors, um, and all the value chain of the retail property industry. But uh, if we um, if we take a close look and we question um, those um, players in the industry, we understand that they, in the wake of online competition, the landlords now perceive a major opportunity to increase football by rebranding shopping centers. So the four points uh, for them would be how do they stand out and diversify their offer? How do they increase the footfall and the dwell time in order to increase their incomes and uh, attract the best retailers? From your side, Jill, I think it would make sense that you tell me what would be the main opportunities for uh, leisure creators and operators. Yes, because, because in fact, what are we talking about? Well, talking about the love story. All retailers want retail and all leisure operators want to tackle the mall's market. It sometimes do not happen. So let's try to understand why and basically what is interest for leisure operators. First, of course, it's a new business opportunities. Most of them work in what we call fake. Fake means family entertainment center. They create um, location-based attraction. Most of time we can see that in entertainment park, in attraction park, sometimes in exhibition, but very seldom in fact in, in the mall. So it's a diversification and it's a growing market. It is also an opportunity, costly but interesting and passionate opportunity to diversify the product. We talked just a moment before how to move from hyper entertainment to retailtainment. The key is technical. It's all uh, do we have the capacity to miniaturize huge concepts like roller coaster, like mega wave, in wonderful leisure concepts that can come inside a mall. So this is a true re-engineering required, but there is no limit to the capacity for them. And of course, it is also a new way of promotion and showcasing the product. All the mall would like to have activation, very original one. Imagine you put a pocket surf instead of a mega wave, you put it in the middle of, of your malls and you have a free opportunity for supplier to show off and for the mall, a free activation. This is a key point. So uh, what would be, uh, if you have to shortlist the challenges, can you tell us a little bit more about them? Yes. Um, first one is to find the right operator. We are talking about two worlds who do not know each other. So even if we, are, we know who pays, who invests, with, how shall we brand the new organization and the new concept? We need people to open the cashier. We need people to make it happen. We need stewardess. We need to have a PNL to know whether there is a return on investment. So we need professional operator. So you will reply to me, I'm sure. Yes, but you have already in every continent. We can think about Merlin, for example, Merlin Entertainment. Merlin yeah. yeah, in France, there is Company de Talp. But this is a huge company and they want to tackle huge, huge assets. So is it adapted to small concepts or? Maybe not. So we will have to find our own way. But the challenge is to find investors all over the world, not in Europe. Developers are the owner, are the operator, and they are the commercializer. So they can take a risk with leisure because we know that it doesn't make so much money. It's, a, it's uh, is more. Is this because um, they are not treated as traditional tenants in uh, in, in in markets which are other uh, than Europe? Is this what you mean? Well, I, I mean that, uh, for example, you take Dubai Park, Park and Resort, the same owner operates the full mixed resort. So even if the first year he has over invested in leisure and lose money with Dubai Park and Resort, he can split and at the end he has a return investment. If you just focus Absolutely. with one store, you take all the risk. So investor is a key challenge in itself. Another one is how to deal with the lack of land reserve. We were talking about 100 hackers for the biggest 
project. Imagine, even if you have a mega mall uh, in Russia, for example, because they have a wonderful mall in Russia, if this is an existing mall, you cannot push the walls. You have to do with, I take an example, uh, you, you take iFly. iFly, you know, is a free fall simulator. Yeah, those guys won at the best Mantic Wars. Absolutely. If you build a new one, it's 5 million. If you want to import one in an existing mall, it's 15 million. So we need to, 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 to understand this and miniaturize. Another way is find the right plug and play concept that can be adopted for indoor play. This is more of a European case, I would say, meaning integrating a new uh, concept within an existing location. Well, if you take the example of wellness, which uh, goes to climbing concept, uh, to um, uh, escape room, all that things, it's a question of scale and size. You can find it in a hood, you can find it in a laser building. But if you want to plug it in an 80 square meter laser store, you have to reinvent your model. This is what we are talking about. And finally, of course, to find the right partner. Absolutely. At the end, I think we could summarize all the issues between three main questions. Who invests, who operates, and who is a tenant to pay a lease? Uh, so yeah, I guess it's uh, an, equally in, an equally important question uh, to both sides, and uh, our um, our goal is to try to create a place where we would be able to uh, identify uh, the right cooperation model for both uh, the landlords and the leisure um, operators. So um, just a quick uh, introduction of uh, what is uh, leisure at Matic. Um, so MapPeak has been uh, on the market for 25 years and our core uh, business is on the left side. It's the buyers and property players who come do their business once a year each November in Um Since several years ago, we integrated the leisure program because this is something which is very important for landlords. Um, as again, we said, <clears throat> the main theme of our show this year is the uh, digital transformation. Uh, the landlords now perceive a major opportunity to increase footfall by rebranding their shopping mall as experience and as a uh, place-making uh, destination in order to encourage customers to spend more time in store, where they will be more uh, likely to purchase on impulse. So uh, shopping uh, in is a uh, shopping rational versus an emotional experience. So <clears throat> our um, key buyers and property players here on the uh, left side, you see uh, big developers like Sinai Sierra, you see Landsec, you see uh, some brokers as well. And uh, this year we're uh, working more on identifying who are the decision makers within each of these property uh, player. So we, um, what we do is that for the first uh, time uh, this year, we invited uh, about 80 uh, market players to the leisure summit with a ratio of 50-50 on each side. So 50% of property developers and uh, buyers who will meet face-to-face -face the leisure uh, operators and the, and the new concepts. Uh, so far, we have some uh, really big uh, conference names, and we're really super excited about it. So, yeah, again, just to sum it up, Mapic is the place where all of the players of the uh, destination of the shopping, of the retail team destination, meet each other. So, um, just to sum it up, Ji, uh, could you please give us some uh, success stories of uh, people that have been able to do something within uh, MyPIC. Yes, thank you, Rita. Um, it was very difficult to illustrate because of so many. So I chose leisure pure players just to show that a bridge can be built between leisure industry and the modern industry. And that we can do. Let's take the first example. It's a British company called Hey He Solve. Um, the best product we know is We Play Vihar. They will be for the first time uh, in France in a mall. Um, in Clépierre, uh, Bellepin, in only two weeks. I've chosen this example because they came from video gamers 
to master franchisor. So imagine all the work they had to do. They have completely expanded their chain of value to adapt to retail and expand globally. So as I said, they started as video gamers. Then they became fake suppliers. Fake, I repeat again, it's family entertainment center. I think it's very French. I think in English we kind of touch yes. the FECs. <laughs> yeah, FEC too, right. Um, but it was very small niche, in fact, B2B. Then they moved to location-based concept and created what you see on the screen, which is a VR uh, Arcan Playroom. Um, once they understood that they could they could have with 20 square meters something completely innovative and immersive because this is the key of leisure immersion is the key they started to ask a consultant do you think we could tackle them all and they were convinced the job was over but indeed it was not because we are not talking about pure technical experience we are talking about making moving people from consumer to consume actor so you need to have a strong storytelling. If you play to VR, you need to make sure, you must believe that you're the hero, superhero fighting aliens. If you're in a boat, you must feel like the captain. So they had to create a storytelling, a, um, a theatralization all around it. And to move from 25 meter to a full NASA station, what they did in fact. And the last step, which is for me, the best model, as when you're talking about economic model, they are now working on the franchise model. Why is it so important? Because when they will succeed in creating a franchise model, the discussion with landlord will be very clear, fluent, and win to win. Hello, we have the capacity to deliver unique experience, to enhance the attractiveness of your site. But, keyword, we also can pay a lease. That's very interesting. I've also spoken to uh, quite a few uh, number of people uh, lately who were um, uh, capable of doing a two-way business, either to uh, be classical tenant and do the lease model or to uh, actually have few anchor uh, tenants invest into um, a new leisure concept in order to increase the, the dwell time in, the, in their area of the shopping mall. Absolutely, it's a pure illustration. Another one very interesting um, is a pure player of the leisure industry. We are talking about Gliss. Uh, they have a global uh, innovation called PocketSurf. But it was not enough. That's what I want to illustrate today. Landlord, you have to make a step towards suppliers to enable them to plug and play in your malls. And suppliers, you have to to make the same step to adapt your product and to talk the same language and to sit. So let's take the example of Gliss to as a conclusion. Initially, it was a concept for surf riding training for the French team uh, for the Olympi Olympic Games and all over the world, they started training people indoor when the weather was bad. Then they also understood the capacity and the potential of this concept to become a mobile attraction. So same way, they came to, to, to us and they say, well, no, I'm ready. It's wonderful. You will see there is a giant wave. We can make a small one. It's a global exclusivity. I just go in the middle of the mall and it will be a dream team. And we had also to tell the story. No, it, I'm sorry. It is not enough. You have a storytelling to do. People must believe they are riding the ocean. Uh, so they started to create a, a 500 square meter decoration called the South House. And one, and it happened in Mall of Switzerland for, um, for Abu Dhabi Investment Authority. And um, we decided to open a concept store dedicated to the mega wave. And very naturally, we decided to, to welcome them and then make part of the story. And now we are trying to work on a global master franchise, mixing a, um, a launch bar, pocket surf, mega web, social club for the, the adepts, and a big library. So the story is on its way. Everyone has tried to understand the other. They have sit together, sit and together, and the magic came too. This is what we want to do to enable leisure and its dream maker to make a better world for mixed results. Thank well, you very much, Gilles. Thank you, Gilles. Uh, I think I'm going to go surf now. Uh, but before that, maybe, 
Well, thank you for this overview and this uh, wonderful insight about challenges and, and opportunities. Uh, before leaving, we're going to try to answer some questions, and uh, we do have three, uh, two or three. Uh, first one is uh, from Mike. Uh, what are the hottest trends uh, in retail talent? Rita, do you, do you want to answer? Um, yes, please, Rita. Okay. Uh, who was that uh, asking the question? Mike. Okay. Hi, Mike. Um, so, what are the hottest trends? Um, well, the location-based ba attractions still remain must-haves, like the climbing walls and cinemas. But um, yes, it's true that uh, in order to uh, differentiate yourself. Uh, lately, the very popular uh, concepts were the pop-up uh, leisure installations like uh, The Void, where, uh, The Void's Star Wars at uh, the Westfield in London. Um, then you have the Nickelodeon Adventure, which was de uh, developed by Parque Srinidos. Uh, then you have some, um, some really, really exciting concepts in the Middle East, like the Jumbo is one of the latest brands of the uh, urban indoor maze in Dubai. It's um, owned within the um, Family Entertainment Center by Landmark Group, who have a huge uh, portfolio uh, within their shopping malls, like Fun Block, Fun City, the Tree Dome, etc. Do you want to add something to it? What are the biggest trends? No, th thank you so much. It's very, very nice illustration. I would just give a secret of retail demand and dream making. You don't, you don't falsely have to reinvent the wheel. What is magical is to, see, to make happen something that should not happen in this place. The first most iconic example was Dubai ski, the dome. It was purely, merely incredible to be able to make ski, to skiing in the middle of the, in the, middle of the desert. And that's what I try to, to explain to my clients. Surfing is wonderful if you are in the core of the mountain, Swiss. Climbing or skiing is wonderful if you are facing the ocean. So don't feel frustrated if you cannot invest, over invest in incredible concepts. Just to be the first one to do this and put it in a place not expecting and you will take it all. Okay, well, thank you, Gilles. There is a second question, which is uh, by Svetlana. Uh, what about in emerging countries? What about in what about, what about, uh, the retail payment in emerging yes. countries? Mm. Oh, well, thank you. Well, um, it's very touchy question because because we are talking about emerging markets. Yeah, first and, of all, yes. each emerging market is completely different from another one. Exactly, and uh, I'm sure that every concerned country will say, "I am not an emerging market," and we have a lot. You have a lot of to learn from us. So, and it's true. So let's 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 quote an example. I know particularly, for example, let's take Africa. Um, when I opened Two Rivers Mall, um, emerging market has that capacity to dream bigger. Why? Because there is so many things missing in their life. They just live by procuration about imagining what could be a better life. And when you can bring it to their country, you can see in the eyes of the children the pure magic of what you do. In that sense, leisure and entertainment make part of the DNA of any emerging market, and it works very really well. Uh, for example, Two Rivers in Kenya has been uh, rewarded as the best African leisure mixed results. When you go to India, or any mall, even smallest one, has a family entertainment location. Yeah, but I think that it's all, uh, isn't this also related to the fact that there is a more important uh, real estate pipeline and uh, bigger uh, bigger hectares of land to exploit as well, yeah. Well, it's not firstly the case. In, in India, it's very difficult because uh, it's a, always a cornership and there are so many. No, it's what makes the difference. I, I will tell you something that is very surprising. In Europe, we are very rich, Every even People, the average people can afford to go to cinema once a week. Just take it as a standard. And they never want to pay for any activation inside the mall. When you go to Africa, to Morocco, everyone can put five, five euro. Sometimes they only earn 200 euro a month, but the five euro for an attraction for the kid, for the family is giving that part of dream and of happiness and proudness of, of parents. So, 
anything in terms of leisure is possible in the emerging market, this is the next big thing. And please just go straight to Africa and India because everything will happen soon in the next decade. Well, thank you. We've got actually a third question, uh, which is from uh, Lionel. Uh, is there a marketplace for outdoor concepts depending on uh, the weather zone? Yes, I think that um, well, if I can just uh, yeah. start, yeah. Well, I, another thing, I think those questions are kind of related. Another thing um, with the uh, with uh, markets which are not in Europe, um, the weather conditions are common. So we have places like the Middle East where it's so hot, so uh, a destination for spending time would be uh, very well identified. Or like in Russia, if you go to some cities, you know that it, in winter time it can be so cold. So obviously the concepts uh, within uh, the retail climate area, they have to be the indoor. And then the outdoor parks are mostly located where we have less, uh, less affection by uh, the meteo. Yes, absolutely. And, and the, the they play indoor from the inception to the mall. It's very important thing to understand for a developer. You need to think from design to your asset that you will incorporate leisure because after it's too late or too costly. This is why Sweden, Sweden, Sweden for example, is very good. Denmark, they are very strong. They can put uh, 3,000 screen meter in their mall because it was preconcepted this way because of the weather but also because it makes part of the culture. So weather is important, but most important is if you want to play indoor, play it from design to conception, because after you will have to build around the mall. That's what we see in Europe. You see a lot of leisure building where they put uh, uh, VR rooms, they put the 5D IMAX movie. Um, if you're talking about at full time, they put the um, uh, Magic City and so on. But it is around, it is around the mall. So you can have exclusive destination for the legend meeting and not the mall. So as soon as possible, build in the same spirit and initially incorporate the leisure component. Well, thank you, Gilles. Uh, we are almost done. There is one last question. Uh, it's from Luigia. Uh, I've heard about a leisure summit for the first time at MAPIC this year. Indeed, you're right. What will it be about? Um, uh, good question. Uh, the Leisure Summit, the very first one is going to be, uh, attention, a day prior to my peak on November 13th in the afternoon. Uh, basically, it's a closed door by invitation only event. Why? Because we want to target exactly the population which is concerned. So again, it's uh, 80 people invited, only senior uh, level. 50% of this uh, population is uh, the Leisure uh, operators, the creators, the specialists in family entertainment centers. And from the other side uh, of the discussion, we'll have uh, the buyers. So basically the property developers, uh, investment companies, uh, some uh, real estate investment trusts. And uh, all of this will be around three different uh, panels, uh, hot discussions. And uh, we have a very, very um, very uh, great uh, panel of speakers. By the way, the Leisure Summit is going to be hosted by Gilles. Thank you very much. For Thank you for hosting uh, me. But we have uh, confirmation from uh, Dreamscape, Immersive, uh, Kidzania. From um, from the buyer side, uh, we'll have people from uh, Majid Al uh, We'll have people uh, who are behind the, the Europa City um, uh, project in north of Paris. Who who are there. So yeah, um, book your date. I know also that uh, a lot of you will be planning joining other summits of my peak, which are on the same date. So make sure to identify the person in charge of pleasure and send them to me. And what is the date, Rita? It's one day before my peak. Yes, November 13th in the afternoon, just before the opening cocktail okay. party. So we book uh, one additional uh, room to make sure not to miss a leisure summit one day before. Uh, you take a flight uh, five hours earlier than the usual, so you go to Leisure Summit, then you say hello to all of your friends, you meet your new friends, and we'll all go to the opening reception at the Carlton together. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you very much, Rita and Gilles. Uh, thank you to all of you who asked actually questions. Uh, it's not that easy, we know that. 
So thank you to all of you. Uh, we hope to see you soon. And uh, as you said, uh, well, why not in MAPIC indeed? Uh, if you have any question uh, about the presentation or about a topic, please feel free to ask uh, to uh, Rita. So you've got her email address here. Uh, uh, and very quickly, um, Matthew, uh, sorry, I ahead. have to add, I have about uh, 50 confirmations for Leisure Summit. So invitations are limited. Okay. I think it's important to know. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yes, uh, you, thank you very much for coming here. Thank you for asking. Rita, thank you very much. And uh, well, we'll be seeing you uh, very soon, we hope. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.